G'day, Steve here, Woodwork and Masterclass. The other day I put up a video on how to square a board by using hand planes. And that's very good and it's a good skill to have. But sometimes you might have a long bit of wood, but you need a shelf or something for a bookcase and it's not wide enough, but you want to use the same bit of wood. If I'm doing a wide board, uh, I'm joining a lot of boards together and it's for a tabletop or something wide, I will actually have it so the growth rings on the tree, if they're running like this, I would have them alternate. So this one would be running down and I'd have this one so it was running up and you turn them around so that way when this one tends to want to cup, it's got one either side that wants to cup the other way and it does lend stability and allows the, the table to stay fairly stable in, um, it's in situ. Whereas if you had them all going the other way, there's a greater stress and you can split timber or pull screws out or whatever. So that's how we'll join this piece. Now, if I followed along that method, it stands to reason I'd turn this board over and butt it up. What happens then, unfortunately, we change the direction of the grain. So this piece, the grain is going to be running that way, but on this piece, the grain's running that way. So when I join these two boards together, I've got opposing grain, and that presents a bit of a problem. Well, not on all timbers, but on a lot of timbers, you'd get tear out. In order to have the grain going the same way, flip it. And if you do that, you will then find that the grain direction is running the same way on both pieces of timber. So now we're planing in the same direction. And now to join these boards, I'm gonna use a sprung joint. If I was to plane these flat and then just clamp them together, they may hold, but there's a good chance that they are gonna split at the ends over time. So a sprung joint, we actually take a little bit out of the middle here. A lot of people find it um, a challenge to plane two edges and then join them together. Because as I mentioned in the previous video, we all tend to roll a little to the right and to the left. And if you plane both pieces and you roll to the right, well, they're gonna meet at the back and there's gonna be a, a V shape like that on the top of the boards where they come together. So here's a neat little trick. Work out that's how you want them to be and then just fold it back on itself like that and put them in the vise. Level them up, and then with the number seven, I'll use a wooden one, but you could use a steel one just the same. Just plane down, and you'll get all that hit and miss, and just overlap the strokes. Until you've got two really nice surfaces like that. If there's any damage or, um, train tracks in there, by all means get a smoothing plane and just give it a couple of licks with a smoothing plane. Now we've got to put the sprung joint in. Put the sprung joint in. When you're planing, you plane normally and then when you're about two inches in or 50 mil in, 70 mil, either side, push down hard on the toe. And we actually get a nice thicker shaving coming out and then you release it at the end. You only have to do that once, maybe twice on a hard bit of timber, but that's it. Now if I hold those up to the light, I can see light fitting through there. And if I had a feeler gauge, I could put a feeler gauge through there, but not there and there. And what that does, when we clamp that up, it actually puts pressure on the middle so the two bits meet where that gap is, but it loads extra pressure on these two ends. With that extra pressure on the ends, when the timber loses moisture due to hot weather or whatever, air conditioning even, it tends to shrink. Now, if we haven't preloaded both of these ends, when that shrinks, that's gonna crack and show up at the end. You have a look at a lot of tables that are made together mass production, if they've been in use for a while, they've got little splits in the end and that's where it comes from. So this way, by having that little hollow in the middle, 
clamping it up, we've pressurized the two ends. So now we're covered and that's not going to split. I'll put a bit of glue on this then we'll clamp it up. When you're clamping it up, try and get these, try and get these ends as close as possible. If they're out, see if you can just juggle it so you've got, if it's too big, you've halved the fatness either side. It just means less work for us down the track. All right, so it's the next day. This has been in overnight and it's glued nice and dry and nice and tight. Drop it in the vise. And again, make sure you get the grain direction going the right way. And if you look at this board now, both pieces are going in the same direction. And it's much the same as what we did when we dressed the board. Now we've got two boards to consider. So I would pick the side that's the flattest to put it down and then the wonkiest bit I've got on top. And again, start with a trying plane, joining plane, long plane, go diagonally. Put your glasses on if you need them. And there's a lot of hit and miss here, but we've got to even these two boards up so they're the same, in the same plane, if you like. Timber plane should be okay. I still like putting a little bit of wax on the bottom of them, especially when you're on rough sawn timber like this. Okay, you can see we've got one board nice and clean, and now we're coming down to the level of the other board. Nearly there, I'll just move this one out of the way. When you get down to about this stage, then just try the long strokes. Overlapping your stroke each time. And that's starting to look quite acceptable. Feel with your hands if there's a ridge where the join is. And there's not, I'll give it one more go with the joining plane. Then I'll have a couple of shots with a smoothing plane. Now we just take all those little tracks that the other plane's left. If you look at that, it's pretty acceptable. If you're happy with that being flat, Mark it with a <coughs> pencil with a face mark. Now we've got to get this face edge 90 degrees to the face. Check the grain direction, pop it in the vise. Go back to the long plane. Once you get one nice shaving coming off like that, again, check for square which it is. So once you've done that, it's now, a bit of mark that so we know which is a square edge. This is our face. This is our square edge. Turn it over, flatten this side of the board again. Again, check for grain direction. So that's how you join two boards together. Get the grain direction running the same way. And if you're using the same piece of timber, you get the same grain pattern as well, which is good. All done with hand planes. In the next video, I'll show you how to flatten a board that's either warped, twisted, cupped, bent, or what have you. And for that, we'll use some specialty planes, and I'll show you how you can make one just yourself out of a simple number four Stanley. So until next time, this is Steve, pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, and more importantly, keep it safe. But enjoy your woodwork in the meantime, and be kind to yourself. Bye for now.